All right, we're back on Central Valley Talk. I'm Mike Scott. Thanks for being with us today. Stephen Hammond is my next guest. He's a local author, and this is his first book called Rise of the Penguins. And this was the first of what's turned into a series of five books. And uh, the author, Steve, is going to be out at the Book Barn in Clovis this Saturday. He'll sign all five of them if you want, right? Yeah, if I will. Want. <laughs> yeah, if they buy them. If they buy them. Yep. That's the key. Yeah. <laughs> so take me back to the beginning. Rise of the Penguins. How did you come up with this um, concept? Yeah, it was an idea that I had way back in high school, uh, many years ago, uh, so long I don't want to talk about it, but I just had the short story back then, and I put it aside for years and years, and I always kind of, you know, scribbled around with writing, and then one day I decided to, well, actually, my daughter was talking to a friend online, and I commented on there something about penguins, and the idea sparked, and I pushed her off the computer, started writing there. And then from there, I wrote it all out by hand at work. That's what amazed me when you told me that you wrote it by hand. I mean, yeah. My wrist would be. Because this, the, first, the first one alone is 700 pages, yeah. 700 plus pages. That's a lot of writing to do. Yeah, I just didn't know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a, a word processor back then? Or? Well, it was just, you know, I was, like I said, I wrote it all by hand because I, I did it on breaks at my work. And uh, so I'd bring a notebook and just scribble out the notes and by the time I was done with it I had a stack about this tall of notebooks and then transferred it and went through about three or four different editors and here it is. Huh. So so what's the story? What do the what do the penguins rise to? Uh the penguins are actually rising against humans. Um uh -oh. an ancient race of penguins, which I dubbed the royal emperors, um they've reemerged and convinced the other clans, which are the other species of penguins, to unite and drive people out of their homeland. Which Antarctica. Is Antarctica and the surrounding islands, even as far north as the Falklands. And uh, it doesn't, you know, I'm not going to give away the ending, but, you know, you have penguins fighting against, you know, modern armies and jets and so forth. Sometimes now, things how, don't How would a little up. penguin fight against... <laughs> A tank or a, well, that's, or a that's, nuclear bomb. That's, they didn't take that into consideration whenever they started their little uprising. But well, if it's gone for five books, I mean, it must be they must be doing something right. Yeah. Well, without giving away, they one penguin kind of rises against his own kind. Ah. He sees that the overlord of the royal emperors is really not quite as quite the good guy. And there's an uprising and that goes from there. Is there is there a Donald Trump of the penguin world? <laughs> uh, I hope not. <laughs> well, it's, so you finished the first one and then you said, wait a minute, there's more to this story. So is that how the second, third, fourth, and fifth came along? Yeah. Um, the second one is actually a story within the first book. Now, wait a minute, look at, look at the size difference here between the, the first and the second. <laughs> yeah, that one wasn't quite as ambitious the second time around. This one's only, what, a uh, little over 100 pages. Yeah, that was a story that was taken out of the first book. Okay. You know, you would have had a thousand page book if I would have <laughs> kept that in there. So that's number two. That's number two. And uh, this is number three. The Whispers of Shadows. Whispers of Shadows. Okay. This is all about the rock copper penguins. And it's a so are these wait, are these standalone stories, or is it a continuation of the beat? They're the all tied story? together. Um, the fifth book, which just came out last week, um, that one can pretty much stand alone. It's another novella, but you don't really have to read everything else to understand what's going on in this one. And the others are they're all pretty well connected. Order of Kings. Order of Kings. Okay. So now, is there a sixth in the works? There is a sixth. It's a prequel. <laughs> You're doing the old Star Wars thing, huh? Yeah, well, everybody's doing a prequel nowadays. There's so. no Jar Jar Binks in here, oh, is there? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> would you like to see this made into a movie? Yeah, you know, well, I wouldn't Of course mind. you would. But yeah. Uh, the I mean, have you, have you even approached anybody about that? Or? No, not yet. I mean, I've had people who would like to see it. You know, people have read the stories and said it would make a great movie, but... You know, I got to sell a couple thousand more books for Hollywood to take notice of that. <laughs> now, how do you? I I think of penguins as not cuddly, but gentle, peaceful. Mm -hmm. How do you take that and turn it into? Oh, 
Well, first of all, a you got a group you know, of warrior birds. You got to be a little warped in your mind to, to <laughs> take something soft and cuddly and make it vicious. Um, but that's what makes a good story, yeah, though, right? I mean, it's so believable. Um, from my feedback from what people have told me that they do suspend their disbelief as far as it being penguins, you know, and being you know benevolent or nice creatures, and they can actually visualize these animals. Doing what they do. Hmm. Do the so, penguins talk? Yes, they do. They have their own language. Or? They do have their own language. They're not speaking English. Or? Some can communicate. Oh, really? Yeah, not all of them, but they they do have ways of learning. Huh. You got to remember, they've been sitting down there in Antarctica for the last 150 years with people coming in. They've been observing, oh, they've been listening, yeah, <laughs> picking it up. Huh? Yep. Interesting. All right. So, any any books up there in your brain that don't have penguins in them? Oh yeah, I have, I have several stories. I have two short stories out, which have nothing to do with penguins. Um, they're more of the mature um, level of readership, and uh, have, well, one of them is about whisker bunnies. So, <laughs> Whis whisker bunnies. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the title is called Whisker Bunnies from Hell, and. <laughs> Now there's a title. Yeah, Whisker Bunnies from Hell. Yeah, it's just a, it's a short read on Amazon. But <laughs> now, are these all available? Uh, well, you're going to be at the book barn, as you said. Yeah. But online, are they available? Or? Yeah, they're all available um, on my website, riseofthepenguins.net, and on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Right, print on demand or whatever, or yeah, all, all the usual places, right? Yeah. Google Google the penguins. <laughs> yeah, Rise of the Penguins. You'll find me and. And all kinds of other stuff about this out there. What do you? What do you? Is this a, your full time job, or do you do something else? Oh, uh, this is it right now. This During the it? summertime, I work for the down at the Grizzly Stadium. Ah, yeah, I work down there doing the new time clock rule. I'm in charge of that. Oh, they have to start the next play within so many seconds. Yeah, that, you're the guy. Huh? I'm the guy. I'm the guy out there. If you see the clock mess up, that's me. So what do you have to push a button and it just resets and? Yeah. Just Stop it whenever they go into the pitch. This is the guy that does that. All yeah. right. <laughs> Turn around and wave to me up there in the press box whenever you're doing the games next year. All right, Steve Hammond, the author of uh, Rise of the Penguins and four sequels and a prequel coming. Prequel coming and another sequel next year. There you go. All right, the book signing is this Saturday the 12th from 1 to 4 at a book barn in Clovis. And, Steve, thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Good to meet it. you. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. And we'll be back with more on Central Valley Talk.